Now today you would have seen no campaigner Warren Mundine absolutely giving it to the Prime Minister at the launch of the no campaign in Tasmania. He joins me now. Warren, welcome to the program. Tell us about the launch of the no campaign today. I noticed the media were eager to ask you and Senator Price about supposed racism in the no camp. Why isn't the Prime Minister ever asked that question? We've seen the racist attacks you and Jacinta Price have copped from Yes campaigners. Well, that's the bizarre thing I, uh, you know, I, I find. Hey, look, the Prime Minister, he started this. He, he could have come out, prosecuted the case for the, for the Yes campaign and, and left it at that. And we could have come out and prosecuted the case for the No campaign. But no, he had to come out and start insulting people and start calling them names, which then opened up the floodgates for other people to do this. And, and, and over the, that period since August last year, uh, we've seen most horrific, racist, bigoted attacks that I've, that I have ever seen in my lifetime. And, and, you know, I just hoped that the Prime Minister would sit down with the Leader of the Opposition and actually and say, OK, we'll make a public announcement that this is not on. But no, he, he just continued those arguments. And, you know, and I slam him about it. Of course I slam him about it because he's the Prime Minister of Australia. He's supposed to open the gates up for a normal conversation and debate, uh, uh, you know, uh, between yes and no people and, and, and prosecute that taste. But no, that wasn't good enough for him. He had to just keep on going with it with chicken littles and other name calling, uh, which is a disgrace. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm calling him out on it. He needs to go back and, and tell people that this is not on, he shouldn't have said those things, and we should move on and have, uh, have a proper debate with a yes campaign can prosecute their, 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 their side of the thing, and we from the no side can prosecute it. And we get rid of all this bigotry and all this racist trap that's going on around. Well, this referendum's already taken a heavy toll on you personally. You've spoken today again about being driven to the brink of suicide with some of the abuse you've faced. Do you have any regrets about getting uh, involved in this fight against the race-based referendum? Oh, look, I don't have any regrets because it is a race-based uh, referendum. It's about dividing the country uh, through race. And, you know, we've been working since the 1967 referendum on building a great nation, a liberal democracy where everyone is equal before the law, everyone has equal opportunities, you know, and, we, and we're moving forward as a nation. We've got migrants who've come here and done a great job, you know, in, in, in contributing to the, to the, the economy and, and the culture of this nation. And it's been, uh, and, and we've been moving down that track for 56 years. And now we come up with this, this divisive, and I mean, it is a very divisive uh, a referendum mm -hmm. that's putting race. You know, I, I just find it funny that some of the yes campaigners say, oh, they're not putting race back in the constitution. Well, last, <laughs> I, all my life, I've been an Aboriginal person and my parents have been Aboriginal people. And, and so when you're putting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander in the constitution, that is putting race in the constitution, whether you like it or not. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I mean, that is one of the nonsensical arguments from the Yes camp. I mean, by all means, prosecute your case, but to deny the obvious that this is about race seems to be just disingenuous. And you wrote a piece in The Australian today called 10 Ways the Yes Camp is Twisting the Truth on the Indigenous Voice to Parliament. And one of the first items you addressed was this uh, mistruth that this has nothing to do with race. Tell me some of the mistruths that we've heard from the Yes Camp, because the Yes Camp is very, very eager to say, oh, no, no, it's the No Camp spreading misinformation. But the Yes Camp, time and time again, has been caught out pushing uh, arguments that are not completely grounded in fact, Warren. Oh, no, obviously it is. You know, you, you know I, that's one of the first, uh, first lies and distortions of the campaign is it's all the, the no-sides problem. It, everything I see 
the vast majority of it is this, of, of these attacks, you know. I've been uh, racially vilified, and, and so has Jacinda Price, mm. from the main leaders of the Yes campaign. So it's not like fringe groups or people on the edge of the campaign. Mm. It's actually right in the centre. So this idea that, uh, you know, the, uh, that it's only the, the no side that are doing these things is just... Crazy to me. I've never racially vilified anyone in this campaign. Neither has Jacinda Price racially vilified anyone in this campaign. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's a whole wide range of other mistruths out there. You know, you know, just like they, they sit there and they say this is this has got nothing to do with treaty. But the prime minister brought that up. He was the person when he when he said mm. we're going to put the full force of the the Uluru statement from the heart. Treaties right in the middle of that, truth telling, which scares the the bejesus out of me, you know, because we've got a bill coming up that talks about misinformation and disinformation. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, you know any liberal democracy, the foundation of it is free speech. And now we're getting all this fact-checking, which, you know, we just saw, you know, the RMIT and, uh, and the ABC fact-checkers mm -hmm. being caught out with their biased uh, uh, checking. Uh, we, is it, you know, we're going to have, what, an arbitrator of truth now, a commissar of truth. This sounds like we're back in a fascist communist state. You know, I just find this <laughs> insane. And, and this is even before they actually get in the Constitution. So you, you imagine what it's going to be like afterwards. Absolutely. And also, I know there's been a lot of concern amongst the No campaign about possible low voter turnout. People who don't support the race-based referendum might just decide, well, I'm not going to go and, and vote. So I know you'll be encouraging everybody to participate in this democratic process and go out and vote. And Warren Mundine, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you very much, too.